Tiffany. Welcome to this episode of Music for the Harps, and I'm going to talk about music for small harp with you today. Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Yes. Tell us about playing on a small harp. I, I know a lot of people are quite interested in getting a smaller harp. Uh, what are some of your considerations and suggestions when getting a small harp, and what are they good for? Yeah, I mean, as you said, they're very portable, right? Um, so a lot, a lot lighter, a lot easier to carry. Um, uh, great for therapy settings, you know, if you have to be in somewhere where there's hospital beds and all kinds of things and you're, you're carting things around a lot, for sure. Great for that. Great for just taking out in the woods, right? You know, our campfire, you know, where you don't want to bring your big 34, 36 string. Um, and another thing I really like about small harps is just how they force you to think creatively because you don't have those bass strings. So you've got to, you know, find a way to make your sound kind of full uh, without all those bass strings. Um, so it really kind of makes you think different ways. And I actually like that about it a lot. Um, but yeah, getting started with one, I, you know, depending on budget, the the fireside harps from Backyard Music are actually really nice. Um, I've had a couple students learn on those. If you're not sure you want to stick with a harp, um, or again, you just kind of want one to throw in your backpack to take camping or whatever, those are really nice. And, and you know, some people hear cardboard harps and they're like, oh no, that's, you know, it's going to fall apart, but it's not like that at all. They're very, oh, very I sturdy. Have, I have yeah. one and that thing is, it's, it's not breaking. <laughs> yeah. so... And the best thing, even if it does, right, you can just order another, um, box for it. That's and, true. Yeah. Um, but those, those are quite nice, uh, for learning on. I like them because of the wide sound box. I think they're easier to like balance between your legs. Whereas, you know, if you got like a harpsicle, they're harder to do that with because they're just kind of top heavy and, and not as wide on the bottom. Um, but that's just me. Um, and a yeah. lot of people end up putting them on a stand anyway. Yes. And if you, yeah, if you can do a stand, I think that's great. Cause sometimes the, no matter what you do, they'll just be too high if it's in your lap. Or, um, yeah, I, I definitely recommend getting some kind of box or stand or something and putting it between your legs because it's going to be more stable and it's going to be more, um, you know, just easier to play than if it's way up here, <laughs> you know, true. on your shoulder. Yeah. yeah. And what are your thoughts on levers? Because a lot of the smaller harp will, will come with no lever and you have the option to put levers mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. And I think that, again, depends on your budget and what kind of music you want to play. Um, so if you are planning on just playing, say, Celtic folk music, you can definitely get away with just C and F levers or C, F, and G, or maybe like C, F, and B. That way you can have your Bs flat so you can play an F. Um, yeah, that definitely works because most Celtic tunes are in C, G, D, sometimes A, you know. Um, so that's a consideration if you have a smaller budget and you can't do all the levers, that's definitely fine, especially to get you started. If you can do all levers, you know, and you want to play other things, like a, a lot of people are writing sheet music for harps now that is in E flat or or in the, one of the flat keys. Um, if you're a singer, uh, you might find it better to sing in one of the flat keys. So, you know, that's another thing to consider. Uh, but yeah, if you can do all levers and you're planning on keeping this harp around for a while, I say, why not, you know, go for all the levers. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And in your um, sheet music collection offering, uh, I know that you have a variety of music for small harp. And when we say small harp, how many strings are we talking about? I usually write mine for 26 strings. So like this dusty here. Okay. And so you have the C below middle C. The C below there. middle C. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of uh, small harp music can we uh, find in your shop? Yeah. So I've got one that's in a collection. I've got three Celtic arrangements. Um, it's right now it's called small harp collection. Number one, there's not a number two yet. Uh, hopefully later. <laughs> it's got leaving Lismore, um, from Scotland. from Wales. Then it has Brian Beru's March. 
march from Ireland. And these are all pretty easy. I would probably call it um, mid beginner in there, in there. Um, and they will fit on a 26 string. Uh, definitely. I think some of them even smaller. Uh, so that that's one collection I have. I've got uh, several others on my Sheet Music Plus site. Uh, there is one for Paco Bell's Canon that I wrote for this harp. Um, and it is, I have one in D, and then I also have Paco Bell's Canon in C, which is pretty much the same arrangement, but I've taken out a lever change. And if you don't have any levers, like on a C tuned harp, you could play that on a 26 string. I have a couple of Christmas ones that are for small harp. I've got the Wexford Carol. Silent Night is really, really simple. Silent Night's pretty easy. It also has at the end some variations you can do in the left hand. Um, if you don't want to play it quite the way I've written it or you want to change things up, it has some easy suggestions to, to change it up. Um, and then Wexford Carol is for small harp, but it's like a lot of my other arrangements where the first arrangement, I have essentially two one-page arrangements. The first one is easier, the second one is harder, more intermediate or late intermediate. And um, that's, that's the Wexford Carol, though they're both full, for small harp. Uh, there are plenty that are on my Sheet Music Plus site. All of the, all of the recent ones, if they don't say small harp on them, and I'm going to probably go and fix those soon, if they don't say small harp on them, they generally will be the first verse is for small harp and is easier, and the second verse is for larger harps. Um, but a lot of them could be adapted as well to be for small harp. Two so more. some of them are hybrids like that, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's also um, what I've heard in the Carolyn's Concerto. Um, it's such a good example of where you don't have to play just really simple music on a small harp that you can actually do something quite fancy and intricate uh, with 26 strings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Carolan's Concerto is on there too. Thanks for mentioning that. That's a good one. Uh, for, for 26 strings specifically. It, um, yeah, I was saying I, I love how, you know, again, it forces you to think outside the box. So if I arrange something for small harp, you know, and I don't have anything below this C, then it forces me, oh, I've got to do an inversion, you know, I've got to do this C on the bottom instead of an A like I wanted to, or, you know. Uh, so it really makes you think in inversions and, and, and do all kinds, of, all kinds of things. But yeah, you can definitely fill out a small harp arrangement. I, I love uh, Harper Tosh once said, you know, something about, I think we have like two and a half, or three, was it three octaves or whatever, you know, on a small harp, three and a half. And that's, he said, that's larger than most flutes have. But we don't call it limiting for a flute, you know. So why would we call it limiting for a harp? Uh, it's just work with what you have. <laughs> That's a, a great a great reminder, yeah, that yeah. how much we can do even with a small harp. Yeah, so, definitely. Well, I hope our audience uh, who uh, own a small harp is going to find your collection useful and interesting. And thank you very much for talking to us about your uh, music for small harps. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Victoria. Thank you.